Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Reaper 5.30 came out today. There's so many great features added in this release. I think you guys are going to really like it. We're going to start off with some of the bigger features and then we'll go into all the little odds and ends. Starting off with control surfaces, there's a new option to use a web-based uh, remote control. So that means through your browser on your phone or tablet or an external computer, you can control your Reaper project. This is perfect for when you're away from your computer, but your devices are still connected through your local network. Um, you can use your phone to play back and record and make new tracks, all these kind of things. It's a really great feature. So let's look at Reaper and how to set that up. Go to Preferences, and you're looking at the uh, Control Surfaces, Control slash OSC slash Web. We're looking at this web browser interface. I have the four different modules that are available. Let's just look at making a new one uh, to start off with. Go to Add. And in the Control Surface mode, we're looking at web browser interface. It's optional to add a password. This is over your local network, so you don't really have to worry about anyone hacking your project or anything. Then in the default interface option, you have a few options here different layouts, basic, click, index uh, is your main nice looking one, and lyrics. These are just HTML files, so you can actually modify these yourself. Um, I'm sure that in the coming weeks and months, there are going to be a lot of users creating their own and sharing them on the website. Once you have someone else's file downloaded, you can click on this user pages button, drop your file in here. Otherwise, you go into built-in pages and you load them from here. Uh, so the basic one is index.html. You also have the option of using the rc.reaper.fm shortcut. If you don't want to type in the IP address, you can type in uh, just your ID. So it could be anything. And then on your device, you just type in rc.reaper.fm slash anything, and it will give you the link. I'll just hit Apply Settings. Oh. And I'm using a port already, so I just have to choose a new port. So then rc.reaper.fm slash anything, and you can open this up in your browser and uh, access it. So I'm going to cancel this because I already have these set up. So the first one looks like this. There's my IP address using index.html. And let's look at how that looks in the browser. So I'm just going to type in that number. So this is what comes up when you first launch it. So we've got our project loaded. I see all of my tracks here. I'm swiping up to go through the tracks. So I'm just going to close these preference windows. I can hit play. Reaper plays. We can hear it. I'm going to stop it. We can start recording. We can activate loop playback. This interface is a little less responsive than you might be used to with an OSC connection or with a MIDI connection. We press the button, it sends the information to Reaper. It sends back the state of the button back to the device. So it's a little bit slow, but it does work pretty well. Uh, we can also advance through markers. If you look at where the cursor position is, as I tap that, you can go forwards and backwards through there. It will also work with time selections if we have one set up already. On the master, we can mute the main output. Let's look at the mixer. So this master send is controlled by this button on my phone. Uh, there's also an auxiliary output option if we have that set up. We can mute the master. We open up the master panel, we can also turn on the click track, turn off the click track. There's a volume control here as well. The volume control is pretty jumpy, so uh, it's kind of just made for quick adjustments and not necessarily for actually automating your mix. It's way too slow for that. We can arm any track here. You can open up the settings. We can click this clone without media option, which will duplicate all the track settings, effects chains and routings, everything except for the items on that track. For recording, we want to cancel that take. We can click abort recording. So that's the default layout. We can actually turn this kind of into an app by clicking on the share button in Safari. 
and click on Add to Home Screen. I already have this saved, so I'm going to hit Cancel here. But you just give it a name, and it automatically gives you an icon for this app. And close my browser. And now I can access these from my home screen. So Reaper Control. The only difference here is that Safari's interface is hidden. We're not seeing the IP address at the top. We're not seeing the Share button. So that's the main index.html file. That's your main control surface option. Let's look at the basic view. So we see our cursor position, play, record, stop, abort record, and a really simplified view of uh, what's on these tracks. We also have the visual click. So I've got click on in my project. I'm going to mute the master. And we see the visual click here flashing on the screen. That one's super basic, but it will probably be updated in the next version. We also have uh, the lyrics view. I will come back to this in a little bit. But that's the new web-based control surface option. I've tested this on an iPhone and an Android-based Samsung tablet. Both work well. These work best in portrait mode like this, but user layouts could be any arrangement, vertical or horizontal. This is a pretty cool new feature and definitely something that uh, will be helpful for a lot of users. So moving on, we now have the option of resizing, re-EQ, re-XComp, and re -affer. So just choose the size you want, stretch out your window, let go of the mouse, and it automatically expands. They also improved the analyzer display. So it's increased range, better integration behavior, and some interpolation bugs were fixed. So if you wanted a larger or smaller version of re-EQ, there you go. Here's re-XComp. Can also be resized. And refer. Full screen if you want. Very nice. OK, so lyrics. Let's look at some lyrics stuff. In the last update video, I showed you a script called lyrics.lua. It's been updated quite a lot. So just going to run this script. We have this window here now, and it's totally different. In the last version, you had to add your lyrics through the MIDI editor or through the notation editor. Now you can edit it right in this window. So I've got a little MIDI item here. I'm going to select my track, which is track 38. Let's put in some lyrics. So we've got track selection. We have the beats. So how many beats are going to be displayed? One is going to be quarter notes. Four is going to be whole notes, etc. Click on Edit. And now at bar, bar 6, beat 1 will be, I'll just put anything, 6. Uh, at eight, it could be anything. And you can hit tab to go to the next column. Commit to save this. Now when we are at bar six, I'm just going to solo this. Turn that off. We can see the lyrics scrolling through here. And if we want to add something in later on in the song, it's just a matter of going to edit mode, choosing the bar. It's going to jump to the uh, position of the cursor by default. At bar 69, you can just enter whatever you want. Hit commit. And now this MIDI item automatically expands to include that. If we select this MIDI item and then click export, we can save this file. You can also import MIDI through this window or through the action list. So again, opening up the action list, typing in lyrics. We have export and import. I'll go import, uh, have one saved earlier, untitled.txt. There are a few options here. Lyrics should be in a text file, one measure per line separated by spaces or tabs. Lyrics will be imported to the last touched track as MIDI lyric events. A new MIDI item will be created on that track if needed. Divide lyrics on tabs or any white space. 
in every one beat, four beats, quarter beats, things like that. So I imported that. We have this visible here. Open up our script again. Make sure our track is selected. And here are the lyrics I entered in that file earlier. What's also cool is that we have that available in our lyrics app. And it does prefer to see our lyrics on track one. So let's just do that. And now we see the lyrics. And this can also rotate the screen. Hopefully that didn't mess up my screen capture by doing that. We can rotate the screen. We can, um, can't pinch to zoom. But there we go. And again, this is an HTML file, so things like fonts and sizes and everything can be adjusted. That's all the main stuff. The control surface, resizing the plugins, and the lyrics view are the biggest changes. Something else that's new in the action list, if we right-click on any action, we now have this option to copy selected action text. So that's basically just copying the name. So I bring over Evernote, I can paste this in. Uh, as a tutorial maker and someone that answers a lot of questions and emails for people, uh, that has been a huge help. This also works with custom actions. So if we copy that for the uh, custom action, we go over to our text editor again, paste, and it's going to actually paste in all of those actions that were part of that custom action. If you can imagine typing all of those things manually, to help someone out, uh, this, has, this is probably my favorite feature uh, of the update. So there's that. Another action is insert or extend MIDI items to fill time selection. So I'll make a time selection here, click Run, and now there's a new MIDI item here. If this is shorter and I hit the action again, it will extend the selected MIDI item to fill that space. Pretty cool. In the options menu, if we look for uh, external time code synchronization, click on that, opens up this window. We now have this option, stop recording if drift exceeds, and then a millisecond value. You can set this to 500 milliseconds, and Reaper will stop recording um, when it is synced to time code, when the sync is lost, and keeps you from recording large amounts of audio that is out of sync. and is probably unusable because it's full of jitter and clicks and stuff. So that's cool. You can also access that window by right clicking on the play button. Shortcut for those time code options is by right clicking on the play button. If we look in preferences for appearance and media, this is a new option here, item volume control. We used to have uh, the option of knob or the top edge of the item plus another setting for the center value of the volume control. So now that's combined into one list. We have the handle at zero is the top of the item, zero is the center of the item or knob. Difference in appearance is pretty simple. All right, so let's look at this actually on an item. It's currently set to the volume knob and that's right here in the um, media icons for the item. If we set this to zero is center of the item, it will put in a volume line on this track. And this is not automatable, by the way, it's just a trim for this item. And we can also set this to top of the item, which looks like this. If we want to raise the volume, we can hold shift and pull up. So that's the default view. I really like having it on knob. I think it takes up the least amount of space and it doesn't get in the way of automation. So that preference has changed. Uh, maybe this is totally new to you. Uh, maybe you've already known about this, but there you go. Something else that's new is with the project tabs, there's a new default option to force project tabs visible when monitoring effects are in use. So this is a new option. You're always going to see project tabs, even if you only have one project open, uh, whenever the monitoring effects chain is in use. If I deleted all of these plugins from this list, then my project tab would disappear. Or I can click on the project tab, 
uncheck this option. Force project tabs visible when monitoring effects in use. That will make it go back to the way it used to be. I hide that project tabs uh, section of the interface. One more thing to show you is that with video, they've improved reverse item playback performance. So I've got an item here, clip from the outro of my video, uh, or the old version of the outro. I'm going to reverse active take. Now it should play back in reverse. And that is indeed pretty smooth, uh, much better than it was before by far. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.